Hello, welcome to the No Excuses podcast. My name is Anne and I live in Worcestershire, in the middle of England, with my hubby and our dog. Today is Friday the 13th. What the heck? Let's just go for it. I, um, I'm surrounded by debris again. I mean, you can see all the stuff behind me. It's not debris, it's stuff. And... I've got everything balanced just about. <laughs> I'm expecting it to crash down on me any minute. So let's see how we get on. But I wanted to podcast today so I can get it up. Hopefully tomorrow being Saturday. But you won't know that until you see it, will you? How have you been? It's just been a little over two weeks since I last spoke to you. And I showed you all my glorious acquisitions from Wonderwall. Um, yes, I've bought a little bit of wool since, you no, know, cotton since then, but it hasn't arrived. So until it enters the premises, it doesn't count, does it, ladies and gentlemen? No. <laughs> um, everything I talk about is down below. We have a mal running, which is something new in 22, which is trying something new that you've not done before, whether it's technique or new hobby. Um, you can enter via Ravelry, Instagram or by email. But now I'm going to launch a new mail because I like to have two running um, in tandem. And this one, I can't really think of a witty name for it. But because Glenda mentioned about the bob and bobbles, and I know a lot of people have got an aversion to bobbles, I'm going to call it the bob along. But basically, I just want you to make anything. Um, just join in the mail and in all the usual places and it will run to the end of September. However, you can put anything in there, providing it's more than, you know, not one sock but two or, you know, a complete thing. If you're going to knit dishcloths, then let's have three or four type of thing. But you know me, I don't like too many hard and fast rules. However, if you put in something that's got bobbles in, or is made from scrappy yarn, then say more than 50% of it you've used scraps, then I will um, give you extra entries for those two items. So bubbles for one extra entry, scrappy for more than half the project, another entry. So you can have up to three entries in the mail. I'm going to stop waving my hands about one, two, three. So yeah, please enter. I will put an Instagram. It'll be any bob along um, in the description down below. And I will put it on the screen now, hopefully. Yes, it's the end of the day. It's about, it must be getting on for nearly half past six now. We've got beautiful weather. Very breezy, but it started out, it's supposed to be dull today. Uh, and it started out like that. Then uh, it sort of, the wind blew the clouds away, basically. So there you go. I might look a bit red today. I've got only a bit of powder on. So I've not done full makeup because it's so late in the day. Um, I haven't, I wouldn't say bothered, but, you know, I made a bit of an effort for you. How are you been? i love to hear your comments down below. I'm really enjoying getting to know some of you. Um, and those of you that you know, don't want to comment maybe or would like to comment and think, oh no, I don't want to comment, then we will um, join in, you know, comment, comment me, you know what I mean, join in, write to me. If you've got a question or for me about anything that I've talked about, then please join in with, um, I say fun, yeah, yeah. I have just made a big, big boo, 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 boo because I've started this and I've realised I've not done the draw for Tom's question last time. You know, I said, if you put the word Tom in. You know. So what I'll do, I'll record my podcast and then, I mean, I didn't really need to tell you about all, everything I don't do, should I? You wouldn't have known any difference if I'd admitted it. And then I'll put a little bit on the end when I've um, screwed away and done it. Because I'll have to do it on my phone or I might be able to do it on my tablet. So, 
let's get into it then. Done the introduction. Hello, how are you? What have you been doing? Have you finished things? What do you mean? What are you wearing? As if you didn't know. <laughs> I have to give a big congratulations to those of you who, when I gave some hints at the uh, on the last episode, said, it's Swamp Monster, isn't it? Da da, in its glory. This is my Swamp Monster cardigan. And isn't it gorgeous? And the colour, I would say, is fairly true. Now, I've got it with an almost toning T-shirt on today. And I've worn it three times already this week. I've yet to put any buttons on. And I'll show you the buttons in a little while, in a few minutes. Those of you who have watched from virtually the beginning, I would guess, will know that um, I've when I ordered this lovely luscious green yarn from Libby at Needle and Fred, I wanted to make a little cardigan. And I sort of ran out of yarn. I didn't quite get to the end of the cardigan before I ran out of yarn. And then I made a tank top, which I've worn once, and I wore it to the previous ten of the evening. Just put your hands down. Now, I thought, well, this is a waste because it's a lovely colour. I like it. I think it suits me. I should be wearing it. So I took that tank top down that night, um, the next day, and I started winding it up because I'd already asked for two more skeins of Swamp Monster. It's always what I had planned, was to take it down the tank top and knit it up again into a cardigan. So I haven't put down, I will put it on Ravelry, how many grams it weighs and therefore what meterage, because I like to keep a track of my meterage. But this is from the Peyton's book, the family book that I usually knit out of when I don't follow a, um, a new pattern. So this is double knit, it's BFL, and all I've done is got raglan, you probably just about to see the raglan shape there. I'll pop a couple of pictures in of a close-up and me sat in my chair further back. I've done a slip stitch pattern, which I'll put a photograph in there, because there was always, there was already one down the back. And what I've had to do is I alternated skeins, because the new two new ones that Libby sent me were a little bit darker and you could see that when you held the balls together so I've just done alternate rows and so my back is a bit lighter than my front but I'm sat in a wheelchair all the time who's going to notice who's going to come up and tell me so there are you know I don't think it's significant differences not enough for me to worry about and I'm the wearer so I don't mind However, uh, yeah, and the other thing I did was I did um, a little pocket. So you can't see it because it blends so well, but I've got a little pocket here. I did a patch pocket with the slip stitch detail on and I sewed it on afterwards. I picked up and knitted the stitches around the front band. Um, I had to do that twice. I did too many first time and when I was casting off, I found that it was fluting so I went back down to my pickup and instead of having to pick them all up again I knitted eight and then worked eight and then knit and then worked two together because it's a knit two pearl two rib and I've done it with an Icelandic cast off and I'm now going to try and show you that no no chance no no chance and the same on the R. Oh, can you see? It's um, uh, it, it's not a bad cast off. It's 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 supposed to be slightly stretchy, but I don't find it really stretchy. And okay, this is done um in double net. Might work better in a chunkier yarn, but it gives a nice edge. And I've also, because I was asked about the buttonholes, I've also done one row buttonholes. Um, and I'll have to take some photographs and put them in for you. But yeah, there's no good me trying to, I can't reach that far. Um, where I got to the point where I was making my body whole, I slipped the next two stitches onto the right hand needle, passed the first one over the second, 
and then pass another stitch onto the right hand needle and pass that second onto the, over the third and then I put them back on the other knee uh, no left them there and then with my working yarn that was still on my right hand needle I I think I cast off three actually I did a backwards loop thumb method uh, on the needle of how many ever stitches that I cast off I can't remember it's two or three and then I made sure I pulled it tight so there was no gap when I joined back onto um, the left hand needle. I put some uh, buttonholes in. I'm just ferreting around here for the buttons to show you because they're a bit different. Um, and I want to put these on, but I haven't got around to doing it yet. But I, I decided I'd wear it a few days and see whether I wanted button uh, buttons on. But I've decided that I do. And the buttons I've chosen are these, and they're quite chunky. They weigh nothing, but they're like a beige colour with a very hint of grey on them. Or blue, I don't know. But for some reason, well, I think they do, they go well. And again, I'll take a photograph of them, sat on top of the yarn. I think they go quite well. And I had eight of these, so I'm going to use up six. Because I've bought some unusual buttons. And what's the point of me buying them if I'm not going to use them? So I need to fasten them on quite sturdily. And I might put a little button behind them to stop them waggling about too much. You know, behind them on the other side of the fabric. So I will do that at some point. I will. I will. I don't like to leave things unfinished once I've decided how I want to finish them. But it was worth me doing the buttonholes there and then. Because I don't think, other than a knitter, would even notice that I hadn't got um, any buttons on the other side. Um, I, do, I do have some gloriously um, limey green shell buttons that would have looked really nice on this. But they would have blended in too much. And I wanted something to stand out a bit more. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is going to be a cardi that I get a lot of use out of because it's just so wearable it's a bit bigger than I expected and you'll see from the photographs of me that Tom's taken from further back that I always got in my head I was going to do a cropped cardigan and this isn't it's way past my bum <laughs> and it's also very big in the arms can you see that I mean I've got chummy arms but and I know I like a deep armhole because of my, my limited uh, movement but they are quite big now this is the largest size in that book and I am almost at gauge but considering I am bigger by several inches than what the finished measurement says I think this hasn't done too badly and I would knit another one um, except I shouldn't be using the same book at a time I've got lots and lots of patterns that I need to get on and work on so this is the Swamp Monster cardigan and I am very, very pleased with it. It has pulled a tiny bit so far. I've seen the odd little bit of green on the floor, but there's bound to be, you always get a little bit of pinning, I think, in the beginning. I think what I like about BFL is it's got a bit more longevity in that department. So, And it's lovely and soft, beautiful. A little bit of dye came out when we put it, um, got a washing up bowl, put some eucalan in it. Uh, Tom did it for me because it won't fit in our sink. And our sink in the bathroom leaks very, very slowly. So after half an hour, it would have been empty. And I wanted this to have a good soak because half the yarn I was knitting with was still crinkly from the tank top. And I was thinking, because I've had trouble in the past when I've knitted with crinkly yarn, that it wouldn't work. But actually... I can't tell the difference and it's I blocked it um, not to stretch it but we uh, put it in the spinner for, on a 400 laid it out on a nice summer day and it dried in a couple of hours turned it over for another hour so it could dry on the back and made sure it was all nice and flat again and it's yeah I'm really pleased with it really really pleased I finished something and I'm happy with it ha ha I'm going to get some exploding cascade effects on the screen. No, I don't. I won't, because I don't know how to do them. 
something else for me to look into. I've closed my book with my notes in. Excuse me a moment. Because I don't want to miss anything. You know how scatty I can be sometimes. So yeah, I am really pleased with the Swap Monster. Progress. The only other two things I've been working on, and this took me, uh, I finished this last week, and I haven't, you know, I was knitting on it a frenzy. Let me just move a couple of things. I'm going to show you my unfolding shawl here. I'll try not to. I'm in the middle of a row. I don't know why I didn't finish that before I started talking to you. But this is the unfolding shawl at the moment. You can see lace there. And that is the right side facing you. Can you see the lace? Obviously not blocked. So here we go. All right. Da -da, da -da. And I should have ordered an extra yard thing because you see it's lace at the bottom and then it's got these stripes with eyelets in. Very easy, I don't need to. You can memorize it very easily by counting how many rows you've got and then you can do a row of eyelets. Um, very simple decrease method. Uh, it is triangular. And I've got that left. And I'm a bit concerned because I might have to order another skein. And I went on to do that the other day at, from Estelle at Midwinter Yarns. If I'd known that, I could have asked her if she'd got any with her at Wonderwall. Uh, my own fault for getting on with this and not uh, you know, get, for not making more progress on it. I would have known then if I was going to run out of yarn. I don't want to, I've got two other skeins, I've got the darker one and the lighter one and I don't want to put them at the end, it just seems a bit weird and I really don't want to undo it because it's taken me hours to knit this off. It's going to be a very large shawl when it's finished but it's going to be very lightweight as well, lovely. Even though it's grey, you know, even though it's grey, it's going to work, silver, silver. Um, yeah, so, so it's out of stock, so we'll see. I might put it on Instagram and see if anybody's got any little bits but really don't know how much I've got quite a few stitches to cast off and um, to decrease on I've got quite a few rows yet to go so the unfolding shawl by Sally Norland lovely pattern once you've got past the lace it's very simple uh, and I'm quite enjoying it had I known I mean I, I looked at the meterage and I thought I'd just make it so it's my own fault for not paying heed I think I was going to be just under and I thought well I'll copy that accurate um, going to be more accurate than I thought. If I'd known I was going to run out of yarn, I could have used either the darker one or the lighter one once the stripe started, and I could have done, say, um, I don't know, every other row or every other you know, block of rows in a different colour, maybe. But then that would have, it wouldn't have looked the same then, would it? It wouldn't look like the unfolding shawl. Anita, since you gave me this at Wonderwall. <laughs> Been using it every day it's super and i'm going to make myself some now i was going to anyway but it's so handy because it folds down and i can carry it out into the garden with me i can shove all sorts of things in there i am the best at shoving things in bags and getting them places i tell you with one hand and things this is my version it's like the litmus cow really except that i'm not going to do the same sequence of rows so this is as far as I've got. I'm just doing 10 rows of each. Now Litmus Cowl is on Ravelry and it is free. Now I will put a link obviously in the um, down below. So this is looking quite nice I think. Uh, I'm on a purple at the moment. Not a bad representation. And that's the grey, silver. And then my next colour, I think, is going to be the green. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. It blends in. <laughs> well, these greens, Anne. So that's going to be the next one in. So I'm doing ten rows of each. Now, in the pattern, it says to knock them at the back don't bother sewing them in and, but I'm going to do a combination of the two because I don't want to um, 
if you knot things sometimes the knots can slip a bit and you can end up with either bigger or you can either do them too tight or too small so I'm going to very carefully turn it inside out and work on it before I uh, kitchen and stitch it all together or I may do a three needle cast off and make in, in colour make some sort of um, feature of it because you know who likes grafting I'm all right I can do it but you get lost don't you that's the trouble bit boring because it's round and round and round we go and it's growing very slowly because you know you know me I've been tired at night and I pick it up and I'm falling low put it down this is I've made this with a view to trying sending I'm going to make another one as well not exactly the same to sending one of them at our craft fair um, or some other outlets you know just just the one there we go So that's my what I've been working on. I've not done anything else in any craft. I've not done any crocheting. Um, I've done lots of thinking and planning, for instance. I've got this left over from the skein that just happens to be on my table from Tom's cardigan. And I've got two more skeins that uh, Libby sent me. And I think I'm going to make a couple of hats for um, the craft store. Probably the only two hats I'll make, but I think a February hat would be nice. Again, that's a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm not doing loads of these things, you know. I, I, um, and I certainly won't be making a profit because, I, as far as I can see, I wouldn't be able to sell them for even what the yarn costs. And you know, that's the truth of it. Time for a slurp. Um, Sugar-free tango, orange tango today. Hang on, it's like, yeah. So yes, that's all I've been working on. Check me notes. Things I've got in the bags next to me. I've got the runway tee from last year that I'm knitting in Lithuanian linen. Again, from Midwinter Yarns. I've not done any work on that. And again, we're now into the good weather. And the other one is the Jack Rose cardigan. It isn't really the Jack Rose cardigan. I'm just using the measurements. I've got the front band and the collar to do because it's like a, it's a thick, it's thick around the neck, around the back of the neck area, um, like a short collar that's been cut in half. So I'm going to be doing that soon, although that's mohair and um, soft tweed, so it's probably too warm to wear these days. But you know, Britain's like we get the odd cold day. Our seasons are blending, aren't they? Blending into one. Very, very breezy. I can see the trees being whipped up we had a sparrow hawk on the fence the other day that was exciting and you couldn't hear anything in the garden as it sat there and looked around and it was there a couple of minutes took a couple of photographs because of course they're rubbish but yeah it was definitely a sparrow hawk nice uh, not that it kills other baby birds but you know i appreciate that nature has a way i've got some birds that are more favorite than others and we all now I have no new yarn as I said apart from some that's going to be arriving I have bought some more yarn from Ange and her D stash thank you Ange and that is going to be for another summer top I've got my eye on a pattern but then I've got all these patterns and I should be using them and I need to make an effort to use patterns that I already own I've also ordered some fabric and I will haven't unpacked it yet and because everything's like if I undo it it's going to go oh, I have no way to put it I um, will show you that as and when I'm either planning to use it or when I'm a bit more organised <laughs> this year next year sometimes never and I will um, show it you then I had a really nice package to the post the other day from Barbara and um, I will give you a link down below to Barbara's YouTube channel. Barbara is a very much a multi-crafter and I'd helped her out with a pattern and she sent me a little note all the way from Australia. 
I thought we'd open up my round. That nice little notelet. And she sent me the most gorgeous EPP hexagon. Oh, let me take it out of the... Um, if I can see. I've got these bright lights on me. Excuse me a moment. Ah. I'm going to cut into this. And I've got some scissors somewhere. It should really be fabric, but I'm only going to cut a little bit. Um, yeah, I helped Barbara out with a thing and she said, oh, I've sent you something in the post. Said, you don't need to do that, Barbara. And it arrived. It didn't take long. A couple of weeks to come. To make sure I don't cut the thing she so longingly prepared for me. This is a quilt hexagon. As I said, I wanted to do some EPP. And then on the back, she's written the names of the animals that come from Australia. So, Australian platypus, an echidna, wallaby, kookaburra, sulphur-crested cockatoo, and emu. And in there. With a lovely um, sunset in the middle. And then she's given me some lovely little paper um, pieces to do my own with and also a stitch marker of a koala bear stitch marker progress keeper of a koala bear and that's sweet Barbara thank you very much yes um, Barbara does a very good uh, walk along her local beachfronts um, when she's in the car traveling as well um, in Sydney and it's just interesting to see a different area of the world, isn't it? I have family out in Australia, but nowhere near where uh, Barbara is because they're in Adelaide. And if you look at maps, you know, it's not the same as going from Birmingham to Manchester when you talk about distances in Australia. Not at all. So, yes, so that's it. Now, the other thing I didn't show you last time because it was in my handbag and it wasn't in my Wonderwall bag that I took with me, was this little gift from Sal. And this was for my birthday. She'd saved it until we met. So, here is, and I love this. I will be sending this paper bag to somebody. Not empty, but I do recycle stuff like that as much as I can. This gorgeous bookmark. Isn't that beautiful? It's quite solid. And it's just really, really, really nice. I'm imagining it's like a side cut of stars and the mountains. Like maybe the black mountains or something. What is it, Sal? I should have asked you. And then the other thing she's given me, and I'm again going to take it out of the packet. I've been saving it to show you. And then it's going to go on the wall behind me. And my notice boards is... Ha <laughs> ha! Whales. There's whales for you. A love spoon. That's super, isn't it? Thank you very much, Sal. Sal was telling me about the... Um, she's not far from the Heritage Park wander. And it's definitely... If I go down to South Wales, it's definitely a place that I'd like to go and visit. I... Don't know about getting down the mines and things because obviously I don't expect them to be wheelchair accessible. But there's probably lots of stuff I can look at. I'd look forward to doing that at some point. Thank you. You lot are very generous. Thank you very, very much. Me, on the other hand, I am falling behind badly with things that I mean, need to send to people. Um, I need to make, which I'm going to do. Um, as soon as the fabric arrives the bag I've got a couple of bags to send to people one of which is to uh, Sophia who won the prize a couple of podcasts ago normally I get it done in the same week but I've been a bit distracted with Wonder Woman and then my cardigan I'm just full of excuses and this podcast is called No Excuses Naughty Girl Anne um, so I'm feeling bad about that and 
I'm also I want to make another couple of bags for ready for giving away. Last time I talked about I showed you what Sal had give, given to the podcast and the big bag of lovely stuff. And there was a lot of interest in both the yarn and the bags. So I've sent all those off to those people who were interested um, with the postage. And they paid me the postage and I sent them off to them. Um, thank you to those of you who sent me a little bit more, um, which I will put towards um, either postage to other places. Um, or I want to start building up a little bit towards making a donation at the end of the year to the Stroke Association again or Ukraine or split the two so um, yeah what was I saying I've lost my train of thought yeah so the bags all went out the only bag I've got left is the, um, the little Japanese knot bag with the drawstring pouch inside so if anybody's interested in that then let me know and I'm happy to send it off to you Anywhere in the world, because one of the bags went to Canada, didn't they? Didn't they, Sue? <laughs> and she's got it, and she's pleased with it. So, yeah. Thank you. I mean, it just showed that you listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> I've sent one lot of yarn off, uh, as the two that Sal gave me, and a few bits and pieces. So, yeah, really pleased. Thank you again, Sal, for your generosity and to everybody else that, you know, it says, oh, I'll, I'll take that, I'll have that, you know, great. I do need to have like a throughput of items because I keep buying things and I am sinking. I know I keep saying it, but I'm sinking. Mm. Right. Let's move on. I've been talking quite a bit, haven't I? My mum said to me, there wasn't much knitting in your last podcast. I went, no, there was a lot of wool, though, wasn't there? And she had got something to ask you, but she hasn't remembered what it is, so I'm just going to go and hide somewhere. Hello, mum. <laughs> where have I been? So that's the end of the crafting. Right, let's talk about where I've been, well, what I've been reading, unusually for me. I do like reading, and it's all or nothing with me in reading, so... Where have I been? Well, I had a look in my diary and I haven't really been anywhere last week. But um, this week I've been out twice, three times actually. On Monday, on the 9th of May, I went to a place called Oscar's Cafe at Blenheim Nursery near Bidford. And the nursery is only small, although I did buy a loop in there. And we went into this little cafe with my mum, who was 80 back in March, my two school friends, Liz and Elaine, and Debbie's mum, um, who is 85, next Wednesday. So we wanted an excuse to take them out. We treated the ladies, the older ladies, to lunch. Worked out our combined age was something like 347, which is very scary. <laughs> we had a super, super lunch. Um, my mum had the biggest meal. There was a lot, didn't your mother? She had a vegetarian burger and chips, which consisted of a big flat field mushroom with um, all the trimmings, you know, instead of the burger. And she ate a lot. I had a tuna and mayo sandwich. And that was nice. The food was very good quality. I can't fault it. Um, and we all had a drink. We didn't have an alcoholic drink. Um, but I don't know whether they... Did they sell alcohol? I'm not sure whether they're licensed. But it was nice. And the lady came out to say thank you because we'd said what a good impression it had made on us and how we really enjoyed um, eating there. It was a lovely little setup. And the lady who did all the cooking behind the scenes, um, now I'm going to put my, I think she's South African, was saying to me that um, everything's cooked from scratch, you know, fresh. And you could tell it was really, really nice. It was nice to be. In a quieter atmosphere, although we weren't necessarily that quiet, and to take a couple of hours over eating a light lunch, you know, or dinner as we call it usually, because tea's in the afternoon, isn't it? So yeah, that was really nice, and then uh, that was Monday, and then on Wednesday with Liz again and my uh, work friend, friend from work, I should say, 
Denise, we went to Evesham Valley. And uh, we, it was pouring down with rain in the morning, but we got there and it had stopped and it did rain again while we were again having something for to eat. But it's a, it's got a large garden centre there where it started that sells all the usual garden centre stuff, i.e. lots of things, including gardening, that you wouldn't relate to gardening, like home stuff. It's got a various outdoor clothing places. It's got um, a weird fish, which I should have should have gone into, and a um, what's the other one? Anyway, it'll come back to me. Clothing, fish. No, anyway, don't matter. Another clothing store, and various bits and pieces for the house, pavers, that sort of thing, cotton traders. They're all small little shops, but they, um, yeah, quite nice to walk around. And they've got a crafter's companion there. It's one of only two shops that they do. Uh, that one at Evesham, apparently, one in Chesterfield, I found out. And I joined there. I bought some fabric and I bought some zips on a roll. Uh, and you get so many metres of zip and you get 10 sliders with them. And I didn't find such good value as that anywhere on the internet. So I bought a couple of those and I'm really pleased with them. In fact, oh, Bertie's behind me. Um, I'll show you them. Well, that nearly ended in a catastrophe. I backed up. Bert got up because he was behind me. Comes down here and I've got a loop from the the um, ring light I've got here up to the plugs on the right hand side. And it, it comes around under my table and sticks his head out as if he's going to walk out after shouting him to wait. Luckily he's good at that. Otherwise we'd have the light clashing down on us, wouldn't we? Not on us, but on Bert. Couldn't be doing with that. Anyway, this is what I'm talking about. So apparently, you pull it out. Of... Let me see if I can open it. Do you know, when you watch these people doing presentations on the telly, you see why what why what why aren't they prepared for it, you know? Well I know I know. Because you think I'm, I can open the box. Oh I'm not gonna open that end. I'm open this end instead, there we go. I don't need it to be in the box, that's the truth of it is it doesn't matter if it comes out. If I rip it or whatever. Does it? Right, we have a load of sliders, you see it, on a roll, there we go, and then you just, it's a nylon zip, so you just cut it off where you want it, um, and you put a slider on. Uh, five metres of zip, and ten sliders, and I thought that was very good, and it was uh, 7.99. A zip's going to cost you more than a quid these days for a new one. I know Mum's got loads of old ones. It's getting the sliders, getting the right colour. So I bought a cream and a grey. And, um, yeah, and I'm really pleased with that. I don't know where I saw it. I saw it advertised on something. You know when these little adverts pop up and you think, oh, they're useless. Because they know what you've been looking at and everything on Google or whatever. <laughs> this time it was useful. So it just proves, doesn't it? There we go. And the box will now be shut. All ready for me to use. When I next put a zip in anything. I've got a few zips. There we go. And the other thing I'm, I wasn't going to show you, but I'm going to now. Because I'm not going to use this yarn for Sophia's thing. It will be for somebody else. I bought this gorgeous umbrella for cow parsley. And this is a Lewis and Irene print. And then the lady helped me choose uh, a blender to go with it. So that would be the inside and maybe the bottom of the outside. And the two, I think, sit very well together. Very pleased. And what she didn't realise and I didn't see, it was up on the wall, was um, little bees on it as well. I don't know if it says on there which... Um, 
which Lewis and I mean it is. Let me just have a little look. We've got a salvage here and it's got nothing on it. Oh yeah, it has, sorry. It says Lewis and I mean Freddie with Love, Country Life We Loved. Country Life We Loved. So yeah, that's that's that. So yeah, really pleased with that. That's a good representation of the colour there. And it's a nice, quite fine cotton. Excellent. Pop that back in the bag. I think the receipt just fell on the floor. Everything falls on the floor. This is why I've got grabbers all over the house, you know. And then, where well, I can't reach Tom has to get sometimes on his hands and knees. The worst thing is where... You know when you've got a shopping trolley? Get that down there. When you've got a shopping trolley and you're trying to push it in one direction, but the wheels have got to rotate before they want to go in that direction. You know, usually straight on if you're pushing a trolley. Well, the wheels on my wheelchair are like that. So I've got two wheels in the middle. It's a six-wheeler called a mid mid-wheel steer. So those bigger, slightly bigger wheels in the middle do the steering and they're attached to them. And then you've got these two sets of wheels set at the back, set at the front, and they are like supermarket wheels. They want to turn in the direction they need to turn as you move, start moving. So if I've come up to my table here and I want to back, the wheels will rotate 180 degrees before they'll take me back more smoothly. So when I'm knitting and a ball of wool falls on the floor, I think, oh, it doesn't matter, I'm just knitting there. If it gets in my wheels and I try and back out and I run over it and Tom has to get on his hands and knees and try and free me from it. And of course the wheels rotated and then it all gets messed up and it all gets very, very, very messy. The trials and tribulations, eh? We're nearly at the end, don't worry. We, you've made it to the other side. I'm not going to say that I will be more organised, but at some point I will talk about colour and I will talk about my perceptions of what suits me and things. Uh, I need to get some little swatches done and things like that, really, to do that. Um, yes. And the last thing I was going to talk about was, oh no, today I went into town on my own, well, Tom dropped me, and because I've got new batteries on the chair that goes in the car, I brought myself home. It took me 17 minutes today, and I had to do a detour because of, there wasn't a drop curb where I thought there was one. Um, I just went into a couple of shops and got some dog treats for Bertie. Uh, I had a look around, went into m and Co, and had a look in there, and uh, took a book back to the library. And yeah, so I was um, I was only probably in town a little bit more than half an hour and all. We haven't got many shops in our town centre and I avoid, usually avoid going into the supermarkets. Um, so yeah, I was quite pleased. Quite pleased to be out and about again on my own. It's a freedom. I haven't really been able to do that when until I've had a power chair. So I've never been able to walk very far. I used to walk okay indoors, um, but outdoors I've always been in a manual chair till about oh, probably it's probably about fifteen years now. But yeah, so okay, um, I've been reading. Let's finish off with a bit of culture, shall we? Or not? Depends on your idea of culture. Um, books that I've read, I have read the um, Night Hawks by Ellie Griffiths which is part of the Ruth Calloway series. Ruth is a forensic, an art, no, anyway, whatever she is. She's a forensic archaeologist. And they're quite nice. They, they aren't really cosy crime, but they're, well, yeah. Anyway, I enjoy them. Um, and when, I've also read The Madness of Crowds by Louise Penny, which I enjoyed a lot more than the previous one of hers which was set in Paris which is all the devils are here uh, and I think I've caught up with Louise Penny there might be another one due out this year 
but I think we're getting to something like the 14th or the 15th in this in the um, Armand Gamache series and there's only so many ways you can wrap up like you know murders in a little village type of thing it's, it's not it's far better written than stuff like Midsummer Murders it draws you in and the characters that you've known now for many years at are excellent but I think it might be me because I run out of steam with series on the telly in fact I've stopped watching series on tellys because I used to be a big fan of any series you know drama or I'd watch it and then after about three series I'd get bored and it would carry on and I and now I don't even bother watching them you know I haven't watched Killing Eve um the latest series I watched was Unforgettable with Nicola Walker in. But that was, they were well spaced out anyway. And that was a crime one. And I'm far more likely to watch a crime one. But yeah, I know I'm missing a lot of good television. Let's get me on. down and watch, shouldn't I? So that was a Louise Penny. And then um, this week, I borrowed a couple of audio books on borrow box from the library and i know that borrow box is a national thing in the uk it might be even international for all i know and i and i didn't get on with the audio books at all i either didn't like the voices where the one person does all the different voices uh, or i didn't like the plot for instance i started listening to the first richard osmond one was that the thursday or the friday i don't know and i just found it it sounded quite Oh. it just sounded too cosy and, and twee to me but I know people have said well I tried to listen to it but they enjoyed the book more or the other way around so maybe I should try the book because I mean he's um he's left his pointless job now hasn't he Richard Osman to pursue a, a career as an author so yeah I do like him I like the bloke um, he's quite cosy I mean visually impaired so, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's doing well as a writer. I think he's in the, the top sellers list. So I should certainly give it a go, really. Anyway, get back to the point in hand, Anne. Sorry. I decided to borrow another audio book. Um, so, and it was called, it's called Dark Truths by A.J. Cross, who is a relatively new author I think and this is around a um, clinical criminal psychologist now I didn't know it was set in Birmingham or around Birmingham but it did throw me because he said the NEC was south of Birmingham and it's not and that annoyed me a bit oh, I was thinking oh it's going to be near where I was born because he said there was a you know something that happened in the south of Birmingham oh oh well, yeah, okay, that might be, you know, I might be able to relate to that. No. But I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed that, and I looked for his, the second book, but it, it's a bit too expensive for me at the moment on Kindle. I don't really like spending more than about three or four pounds. Um, maybe I should have a look in the works and see if it's part of their three for a fiver. But um, I will follow that second one up. So that's AJ Cross. I'll put all the names down below what I've been reading. And then I read... Again, on Borrow Box, I read it on my phone <laughs> and I spent most of yesterday doing that, another day that I didn't make um, the bags. And that's The Coffin, Maker, Coffin Maker's Garden by Stuart McBride. Stuart McBride, I've probably mentioned him before, is one of my favourite authors. Very gritty, very violent, with brilliant humour in sometimes. Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I read it quite fast. I didn't finish it until about 11 o'clock last night. And I was getting a bit speedy reedy then. And I was probably missed a few things out. But it wasn't one of his Logan McRae books. It was a culmination of two of the st standalone series that he's got that joined up. So anyway, I'd recommend it. Really like it. Um, and then I was... I'm also looking to read The Cara Hunter series can't remember what the spectre's called and i've also organized for me to borrow a kerry wilkinson 
which is the Jessica Daniels series, which I really like. And I have, I'm about four books behind. I've bought most of those on Kindle, ready to read. But the one, the next one that I need to read, um, I've ordered from the library because, um, again, it's too expensive in my mind. And me, me and my mum will read them. And so would Barbara, Debbie's mum, if I could get her to work her Kindle. But she, um, I've written her some instructions, but I need to sit down with her again and see what she's doing wrong because she I think she struggles when she gets to the end of a book. She's fair enough. She's 85. I've never done anything with any tech. So, um, and then finally, something I've been meaning to do since I retired, and that is read Terry Pratchett's again. So this afternoon, Tom found we've got all of them, either in paperback or hardback. Personally, I prefer a paperback because I find it easier to hold. But then most of the time I read at a table now anyway. And I've started on The Colour of Magic, the first Discworld novel. And I'm nearly halfway through already. <laughs> now, I don't really read fantasy, but I love the Discworld novels. It's, I don't know, it, I mean, they're funny, they are spot on with the human psyche. They are, they, you take the, the stuff he weaves from all different things, sayings, stories, fairy tales, plays, music. It's just incredible. And you could see that his mind was extreme, extremely active. And you do have to wonder whether that is, you know, a precursor in some people. To dementia but it's a great loss to the world so i've started on the color of magic i won't read them i will read them sequentially but i'm not going to read them one after one after one after another um so there we go so that's the, my current read what are you reading hmm? let me know now i'm not going to go anywhere i'm going to turn you off and i'm going to come back having done the draw okay so i'll see you lot in a minute or even about flash hello right very quickly now because i'm hungry i want your tea <laughs> um i've just done a youtube comment picker on my tablet so i can't show you the screen thing but it the comment picker chose tina b so Put your details there, Tina. Please get in touch and let me know um, your address and I will send you something. Now, I was going to send you one of the bags. Now, you can have the not bag if you like, otherwise I'll make your bag. So, um, I'll talk to you about that. We enjoyed reading the comments about all the different things that people had made. And I think it's amazing. A couple of you said by the twine. And, and plastic carrier bags. And I'm not, some of these things must be so hard on the hands. But, um, I would have done something like that when I was younger. But now I'd go, <laughs> can't be bothered, you know. <laughs> so well done to everybody. And thank you for joining in. I won't set another question now. Basically, because I didn't think about it beforehand. Because I'm disorganised. No excuses. I will see you in a couple of weeks' time. Please get in touch. If you've got any questions or comments to make, like shut up, why are you knitting with green again, etc., etc., um, then, you know, you know where to find me. Have a great weekend. Weather here in the UK, or where I live anyway, is supposed to be very nice, and I am going to be sat outside reading and or knitting. Take care of yourselves. I'll speak to you soon. Ta-da.